What's up everyone, my name is Matthew Dale. I'm here to help you play better, sound great, and understand more. And Firmware 25 just released for the Axe FX3, and I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about some of my favorite features in this great firmware update. So although the big ticket item with this firmware release is gonna be the new Cygnus X3 amp modeling, um, it wasn't the first thing that kind of caught my attention when I was looking at the release notes. I was a little bit more excited about a new amp that we have in here called the, let me pull it up here real quick. It is going to be the Class A 30 watt Brilliant. So this is gonna be an AC30 type of amp model in here. Let's go ahead and pair this with a cab out of my block library here. This is the Dyna AC30. Uh, and this is the Class A uh, 2x12 mic'd up with the Dynamic 2 microphone and the Ribbon microphone. And let's just hear what this sounds like at stock settings. Let's hear the bridge pickup on my Strandberg Fusion. <laughs> And now middle and neck. I love the AC style of circuit where you have this really nice tight compression where there's not a big uh, range in volume, but then you get all of this touch sensitivity and this really nice, of course, edge of breakup thing that happens with this really nice, chimey uh, cutting amplifier. These, these amplifiers are great for cutting through a mix. If I wind back the volume a little bit, let's see how it cleans up. Cleans up really nice. Back to the bridge pickup, full out. Let's make a couple of tweaks. Let's could just dial back the gain a little bit, a little less bass, a little more treble, and dial up the high cut. Don't be afraid of this high cut control. Um, these are like, you know, really, really high frequencies. Um, so this is just getting out a little bit of that shrillness that can happen with this a little bit. <laughs> This almost kind of, I, it, it reminds me of this sort of thing. If I turn this up a little bit, go to my bridge pickup and turn the bridge pickup down a little bit. Yeah, so that's a little Zeppelin 2, What Is and What Should Never Be. Great guitar parts, great song off of one of my favorite albums, Zeppelin 2. Let's dial this back a little bit again, and let's bring in a drive block, and I want to talk about my other favorite feature, or one of my other favorite features, and that is a new drive type, uh, or I guess an added drive type. So the previous release had the Sunrise Splendor in here, uh, which is modeled off of the JHS Morning Glory, one of my absolute favorite physical drive pedals. That has been renamed to the Sunrise Splendor High Cut, so that is that pedal with the high cut engaged. Now, I often ran that pedal without the high cut engaged. I liked the really high chimey frequencies I was getting out of that drive pedal. So that iteration of the pedal is now the Sunrise Splendor. And we can hear when I play this back on, I'm gonna just boost the gain a little bit and the level a little bit. And here's what we have now. <laughs> So we have this really great cutting drive sound. If I go back to um, neck in middle.
there's something that feels very alive about that. And although it might seem a little bit uh, in the excess of the high high end frequencies, uh, this sound really cuts a lot. And something that kind of brings to mind here with this, if I go back to my bridge pickup, and let's just bring this back just a little bit, do a little bit more gain. <laughs> I love that sound, although that was a Dallas Rangemaster going into an AC-30. This does that sound really, really well. And now for something that I think is going to make everyone's life a little bit easier when hooking things up in parallel. Let's go ahead and bring in a reverb block over here and a multi-tap delay block down here, multi-tap delay. I'm gonna hook these up in my preferred parallel. We have a new button, a new switch that is on our wet effect. So if I highlight this reverb here, we have a kill dry. And although I still want to run this bypass uh, on mute in like I just would any uh, any effect that's hooked up in parallel. Now we can use our mix control to actually adjust the level of our reverb. So let's hear this on the reverb. I'm going to bypass the multi-tap delay right now, make sure it's in mute in, and let's just hear the reverb by itself. And now I can use the mix control to adjust that reverb. Now, why is this a big deal? Uh, it's a big deal to me because it means that one, I don't have to have a separate um, block in my block library for parallel and series. I'll show you that in a second. But something else that I think is really useful is this. So on my perform pages, typically what I would do if I'm hooking up a reverb or a delay in parallel is I'd probably take this level control or the input gain control and map it to one of my per preset performance controls. But over on my global performance controls, I have the global reverb mix and the global effects mix over here. These control basically a 50% swing in either direction to dial in our reverb or our effects mix when setting up at a venue. And because this only affects the mix parameter and not the level or the input gain, it means that I get like two or so spaces back on my per preset performance controls uh, to map other parameters to. So I'll show you what this does here. Here's the large hall again, back on neck and middle. And if I pull our reverb down, and pull this back up. So there's that, it's really a 100% swing. So it would start at 100%, I can move it down to 50 or move it up to 150. Um, and we can use that to, you know, kind of fine tune our wet effects at when setting up at a venue. I mentioned a second ago that this is really useful for utilizing the block library a little bit more. So on my chorus lead delay, you can see this one is set up in the old style way of parallel effects. So mix is all the way up at 100% and I'm using the level to dial in the reverb sound, chorus mute in. Well, maybe I wanna try this wide lead de delay that I typically have in series. So now I go back to mix at 20%, level is at zero, but now I have the kill dry engaged. So this is going to work. Of course, it has mute effects in. This will still actually kind of work in parallel, but I still like to just do mute in just to be on the safe side. So now here's our multi-tap delay that we can hear. And let's go ahead and dial this back down to something like that. Let's go back to our reverb and shorten this reverb up, kind of like that. Let's make this a little, a little bit better, a little bit stronger. Let's add a compressor, utilize my block library, which you can find for yourself. You can download this for free at matthewdale.com slash blocks. If you want some of my favorite go-to sounds, I'm gonna do a little bit of the light post compression for the instant better button. We've got the Sunrise Splendor. Uh, juiced up maybe just a little bit more and let's hear some of that queen sound again <laughs> So 
So there are some of my favorite improvements in Firmware 25. My name is Matthew Dale. I'm here to help you play better, sound great, and understand more, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.